singing. You like it? Then. Want to learn to fix your sink? Things are functional, don't you? Want to earn some badges? <laughs> and unite with other badges? <laughs> Let's make a place that we I do. <laughs> but you really fucking hate camping. I do. <laughs> can make a craft or have a beer. Craft beer. You'll learn some useful shit here. <laughs> That's what I hear anyway. <laughs> Let's make a place that we belong. And join the camp our hoo-ha song. We're gonna camp hoo-ha, hoo-ha, hoo-ha. <laughs> Two minutes, you were right. That's funny. Hello, campers. Welcome to Camp Hoo-Ha at home. This is our fourth event. We have a paint night with the amazing Mandy Stobo. I'm just so happy we have a live feed working. I just want to stop right now. <laughs> I just call it a night. We did what we needed to do. I feel like uh, it's a huge win already. So um, I'm super happy. We've had some technical issues the last couple of events, and it's been hard for me to focus on anything but the technical stuff. And we got some help this time around. So I can finally be the high hoo ha that gets to have fun, focus on vagina jokes, dream about Jason Bateman, and just focus on you guys, my campers. So I am a, I'm a happy high hoo ha tonight. So um, for those of you that are new to camp um, or don't know much about Camp Hoo-Ha, we are essentially a skill building club for adult women, kind of like the clubs that we were uh, a part of as kids, um, girl guides and brownies and all that stuff. We get together, we learn cool things, we earn badges, we have fun, we make friends. Um, and camp started in 2017 and is now in 12 cities across three provinces. And normally we get together in person, we eat together, we drink together, we sit on benches. Um, and camp was actually designed to get us off of our screen. So crazy enough, here we are uh, doing what we do um, virtually, which isn't ideal, but we're making it work and finding ways to still deliver the camp experience the best way possible. And um, I just love that you guys have been sticking with us. And um, for you new campers, I hope you have a, a fun experience and get a taste of what camp life is about. And hopefully in the future, when it's safe, we can come and give you the in-person event that we love delivering so, so much. So, um, but I wanna give a huge shout out. We've got, normally we're just strong, independent women that like to solve our problems on our own. But we've got a dude in the house tonight. We've got Rob, who is deep in our hoo-ha, <laughs> making it awesome. So, you know, I was the damsel in distress the last two weeks and was like, we need, we need Rob, let's bring Rob in. Um, and we're so, so happy we've got him here uh, to help take, like I said, all of the technical stuff off our plate so we can focus on the fun stuff. So. Rob, now that you're on Team Hoo-Ha, we're keeping you in our Hoo-Ha. <laughs> we're only letting you out once a week to go get groceries, and then you're going back into, <laughs> back into with us. So we're super happy we've got Rob. Um, I'm so excited to have um, Mandy Stobo as our camp counselor tonight. Um, the reason, well, I'll get into Mandy in a second, but the reason I picked the um, 80s crush theme we can paint anything we want, but I feel like we've all been staring at, you know, probably a significant other for the last <laughs> Just stare 
sang night and day, all day, all night. So I thought, wouldn't it be nice to, you know, have a, a fresh face to focus on for an hour or so and uh, change things up a bit. And I also love the 80s or the 90s thing, um, because for me, it was a chance to maybe have a little bit of an escape. We're all stuck here. We're all stuck in this place, this time where it's the same thing day in and day out. So for me, this was uh, a bit of a chance to go back in time. And uh, so Mandy's got the keys to this time machine tonight. So she's going to uh, lead us on this journey. And as much as Mandy has, Mandy has been our camp counselor many times over, she's at summer camp. And as much as Mandy helps us escape, she's also somebody that helps bring us closer to ourselves too. So Mandy is a camp treasure that we all love. And I'm so excited to share her with a lot of you guys tonight who haven't had the chance to paint with Mandy. So super excited for Mandy. Um, we've got some Mandy print giveaways. Um, I'm gonna talk about at the end. We've got some stuff we wanna give away. We also have some giveaways from Courtney Barrett who comes to camp all the time. She has scrunchies that have a penis pattern fabric. So we've got a whole bunch of penis scrunchies we're gonna give away. Um, and then before I pass it over, I wanna quickly introduce my team. You'll meet all of them um, as we get into the program. Uh, these guys have all been regular parts of camp. Um, Carla Watts, who's our booze camp counselor, the most important uh, camp counselor at our event. So she's gonna do some wine tasting notes for you guys for five minutes off the top. And this week we picked crushable wines, kind of like our 80s crushes. What are those wines where we could just, you know, the cheap and cheerful crushable ones, whether they're in a can or critter wine, which I like to call. So she's going to do some <laughs> tasting notes. We've got the amazing J9, who's going to sing us a couple of songs um, before we paint. And I think she's going to do one at the end. J9 has been making us laugh and sometimes fear pants crying at events. And she writes original songs for all of our events. So she just finished writing hers. <laughs> Ago. I'm actually still doing it. I'll be right back. <laughs> Perfect. And then we have Miss Mandy Stobo. Like I said, Mandy's gonna uh, tell us more about herself. She's a part of camp. She's got an amazing story and makes art accessible mm -hmm. to us. We've all gone to those paint nights where you're trying to paint the perfect Tahitian sunset and getting mad and having a terrible experience. So Mandy takes all of the stress and uh, and. Uh, you know, icky part about art and makes it fun and accessible and we love everything about Mandy. So, and then Mandy has a volunteer tonight, the amazing Stacy Campbell, who has also been um, hashtag talent at many of our camps. So Stacy is gonna be um, Mandy's helper and you're gonna get to see some of Stacy's art in real time. She's gonna talk about some of her crushes, so. I was voluntold, let's be honest. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we were. Um, so that's the team. We've got Diana behind the scenes. She's on Facebook. She's going to be watching our questions from you guys uh, on Facebook as you guys are joining us. Um, and then I was just going to quickly talk about my crush. Because um, I feel like we all had kind of like, as you were going through your teen years, you had some kind of weird crushes. I think for a lot of us, I know for Carla, you had you either like them like squeaky clean or like just like ditch pigs, right? <laughs> so oh I have, like, yeah, Ricky Schroeder and like <gasps> Nikki Six from Motley Crue at the same time. <laughs> I think I want Ricky Schroeder's like mansion. I think that was my MO with the Ricky Schroeder thing. And then with Nikki Six, I think it was just the bad boy thing, but after that, I also had a crush on, at the same time, Elizabeth Shue and Billy Shue. <laughs> like, you can't have a threesome with siblings. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Not on the menu. Um, anyway, I'm going to pass it over to Carla. Thank you, campers, for being patient with us. Um, I'll remind you at this point, this is a very adult content, so throw headphones in lock up your kids, you know, put yourself in a room where you can uh, have the volume up or um, have to total privacy. And uh, I'll be back at the end of camp to do a little um, goodbye. So welcome, Miss Carla. Hey, y'all.
<laughs> oh, I made it this time. Thank you, bro. <laughs> I was crying because I didn't get on last time. I missed you guys. Um, and I was about two bottles deep by that time. So it was probably a good thing you didn't see me. Um, anyway, so we're, um, yeah, we're talking about crushable wines. And um, Mel, I know, picked one for you tonight. I'm hoping some of you have that one. But I wanted to start and let you know just a couple that I've been doing because I know all of you who know me as the booze counselor also know that Mel didn't mention what we do at camp a lot is while we crush a lot of booze. And so it's my job to provide you with stuff that won't totally kill you. <laughs> to take you really <laughs> close to the edge and just knock it back just a, just a touch. So what's really fun tonight is um, I have, I'm usually a good like one, 1.5 bottles a day, but this, this damn COVID situation has knocked me you know, a little bit on my feet and I'm kind of crushing a little bit more. So I'm up to about two, 2.5 bottles a day. And, um, you know, it's just, it is what it is. Don't feel bad. Don't feel shame. This is just how we survive through some of our awesome, uh, crazy moments. And honestly, we'll come out the other end. And, um, but sometimes you need to just like, know if you're going to take it up a level, you got to take it like to a level that won't kill you. So the crushables, the crushables I've been playing with are can, my COVID cans. So if you need a breather, we can play with wine. This is wine by Joe. This is Oregon Pinot Gris. He also has a red if you're into red. There's some amazing Pinot Noirs. Now, Typically, this looks crazy, right? Wine in a can. You're like, what am I doing? Am I drinking Mel's cardboard dough? What is <laughs> happening here? No. So those wines are fantastic. It's Oregon juice. It's really good. It's two and a half glasses in one can. This will run you about, I want to say, eight, nine dollars per can. So not bad. Half a bottle of wine runs you about, you know, eight, nine dollars. That's not too bad, not too crazy. If you need to take it down a notch and you need to sweeten it up a bit, here's your big house rosé. This is the siren. We all have a little siren inside of us. And sometimes it's just a touch of sweetness. It's literally, look at this tiny little thing. Just take her back, <laughs> crush it. Nobody will know. Nobody will even know that that went down the hatch. Safe. Hey. So the next thing we wanted to talk about was La Vie Femme. Now, I'm hoping some of you had this tonight. This was the one we decided to play with. It is what Mel calls a critter wine, which is kind of crazy because it's not really a critter. It's an animal, so it's a bit of a step up, which makes me a bit happy. They have a white, they've got a rosé, and they've got a red, which is great. It is from France. Now, Southern Rome. I can't, you can't really go wrong from Southern Rhone in Rosé. You're going to be good. This is a blend, three different grapes. It means the old farm. Okay, must be good. Now, this stuff's not going to blow your hair back. Anybody that's got some right now, you might smell a little fruit. You might smell a little flowers. Not a whole lot going on here, but... 14 bucks a bottle. Boom. I'm going to have one, two, three of these things and you're going to be fine. Now, what's kind of funny about this wine is it's from the Perrin family. The Perrin family in France paired up with Brad Pitt. Any of you who know of Brad Pitt, I'm guessing, came out with his own Marival Chateau wines. They're working together. So I thought kind of cool if Mel will allow it. 1991, Thelma and Louise. That was Brad's first movie. Any of you 90s little girls out there that had the Brad Pitt crush should be allowed to paint Brad Pitt is kind of what I'm thinking. So my, um, my COVID cans, my crushable VA farm from France. I hope you guys are enjoying some of it. My crushes tonight, as Mel said, not Ricky Schroeder. I don't know. Yeah, he's not my guy. It was Kirk Cameron. 
from growing pains. If any of you guys remember with that slick kind of curly hair. And then it was a wall size poster of Eddie Vedder, Pearl Jam, all of five foot five of him. Mm -hmm. So that'll be me tonight. Mwah. Love you guys. Hope you're in deep and we're going to have some fun paints. Bye. Bye. Uh, hello, everyone. Welcome to Camp Huba Paint Night with me, Mandy Soho. I hope you guys, you know, did a similar look to me. We, this Jane, we need Jane Ine up. Yeah, yeah. So right now, we're going to bring up the amazing and awesome musical talent of J9. Are you guys ready? Are you guys ready? Are you ready? Let's just all start chanting J9. Go J9. Woohoo! No, but you're fired. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> uh, <laughs> okay, so I got a couple songs I'm going to sing. Um, for any of you who've been to the paint night with Mandy where we sang a uh, um, or where we, we did a nude painting. <laughs> we literally painted a naked band standing in the <laughs> months, actually, didn't we? We flew all the way to Kelowna just to look at a nude. <laughs> young man, too. He was young. I don't even feel right about it. <laughs> they said he was 30. It was fine. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Anyway. <laughs> uh, so this is the song that I wrote for the nude paint night. Um, <clears throat> It's called Rock Hard. <laughs> Got me a babysitter and a brand new paintbrush too so I can learn to paint a stranger while he's standing in the nude. All the greats in history work with the naked form to learn techniques, improve themselves, and watch their skills transform. It's true of Pablo Picasso, Vincent Van Gogh too, even Mike. Angelo's David is a nude. He's carved out of marble, one single block. The statue of David is as hard as a rock. He's rock hard, rock hard, hard as a rock. I want to learn from a genius the best stroke for a penis and how to make those testicles my very, very testicles. And what's the best paint? For that quaint little teens, I really want to nail the trail to the way. I know some of you ladies are here for reasons that are wrong. And you came to this class just to see a schlong. I'm not here for the motto. I'm here to learn the art. And I'm sitting front row center, so I pray he doesn't get rock hard, rock hard. Hard as a rock. <laughs> Mandy, you're a great backup dancer. Thank you for that. <laughs> okay, so crushes. So I was writing a song about crushes. So here's the thing. Honestly, I think my first ever crush was Teddy Ruxpin. <laughs> I legit, legit recall taking Teddy with me on the bus, on school field trips, but he was probably the best crush of all because when he talked too much, you just take his batteries out and he'd shut the fuck up. So yeah, <laughs> first introduction to toys with batteries, right? So why wouldn't you love him? Um, so here I am, write a song about 80s, 90s crushes. Like this was hard because once you start thinking about it, you're like, you could sit for days and list the hot guys of the late 80s, early 90s. Like, I'm sorry, but like I could, I could go on and on and on. So this was a really hard one to do. So this song is gonna be a little bit different than what I usually do. This is more of like a slam poetry spoken word. And it's not at all because I left it until today and literally just wrote it an hour before we got on live. It's because <laughs> one time when we were in Kelowna and I rapped the Turkey song to Mandy, she loves a good rap song, so that's what she's getting tonight. It's a good, uh, a good rap song. <laughs> that's for sure what it is. Okay. <laughs> okay, so here we go. 
<laughs> Paint night in quarantine asked me a question. So it seemed who was my crush from when I was a teen? I had to think back and oh, what a scene. Looking back, I realized I had issues. So many issues of Tiger Beat magazine. <laughs> Whoever happened to be on the cover would be my lover, the boy of my dreams. March 98, I was planning my wedding, writing my vows to that quirky Michael J. Fox. But then April came, along with new issues, because there were five new kids on the block. And my heart ached for each and every one of them. Okay, maybe not that old brother Jonathan. I chose Joey, but soon we had growing pains. I blamed Kirk Cameron. We were on again, off again. Looking back, I didn't realize I had issues. So many issues of Tiger Beat Magazine. And whoever happened to be on the cover would be my lover, the boy of my dreams. <laughs> Making out with the posters is what I like best. My very first kiss was Michael Jackson in his yellow sweater vest. French and Scott Bayo was great practice for me. You can tell because there's a hole where his mouth used to be. <laughs> Johnny Depp gave <laughs> me that special feeling when I hung his poster high up on my ceiling and I'd stare up deep into his eyes with a pillow tucked tightly between my thighs. Looking back, I realize I, I had issues. So many issues of Tiger Bee Magazine. And whoever happened to be on the cover would be my lover, the boy of my dreams. Two Corys, you'd think that'd be confusing. Am I talking Feldman or am I talking Hain? Well, that was nothing compared to the confusion. Alyssa Milano brought me, damn, she drove me insane. Did I like her because I don't want to be like her or did I like her because I like, I like her? I'm not sure. <laughs> But if our paths ever cross, I'd really like to show her who's boss. Looking back, feel as I had issues. So many issues of Tiger Bee Magazine. <laughs> Whoever happened to be on the cover would be my lover, the boy or girl of my dreams. <laughs> I had one crush who was... <laughs> crush whose copies flew off the shelf he was out of this world you know him his name is Alf Alf was a bad boy who liked to eat cats and to be honest I was okay with that he turned me on that he wasn't a wussy he was just my type the type who liked to eat looking back I realized I had issues so many issues of Tiger Bee magazine and whoever Happen to be on the cover would be my lover, the boy or girl or alien of my dreams. <laughs> that was for you, Mandy Stobel. Oh my god, that was so amazing! That was the greatest. Oh, I love you. <laughs> Oh, that was so amazing. Thank you, J9. I think we all need that recording so we can listen to it when we wake up in the morning every day during COVID-19, right? I think so, right? I need it for sure. If uh, I'm going to listen to it, I think, 17 hours a day. So hello, everyone. Welcome to Paint Night with Maddie Stobo. <laughs> I am so excited to paint with you guys, and I'm so excited to hear about all your crushes. I have a long list of... Um, strange to, to beautiful. And I think we probably all have that. Uh, but before we begin, I want to go over the, the supplies we need. So we just need a couple pieces of paper, some Sharpies, some watercolor paint, and a brush. If you don't have those things, you can use anything that you have in the house, like crayons, pencil crayons, um, food coloring, kind of anything that you have. Let's just make some fun. And before I get into my story, I do want to say a quick hi to my amazing assistant today, Stacey Campbell, um, who is incredible. And so she is going to be real time showing you guys what we're doing today. Just so if you have any questions, Stacey will show you exactly what to do. She's been training for this, and I am so excited for you to see her beautiful masterpieces. So before we begin, I'm just going to tell you guys a bit about myself, uh, my history, and kind of how I became a visual artist and how Bad Portraits began. So here we go. Are you guys ready? Does everybody have a drink in hand? I think we need a quick drink first each, right? 
Uh, and a quick hoo ha. Can I hear a hoo ha? Hoo ha. Hoo ha. Hoo ha. All right. Are you guys ready? Here's a quick, quick, quick introduction to how I became a visual artist where I get to teach you guys how to paint bad portraits of your crushes. All right. Here we go. So welcome to the art of being bad. It's a COVID hoo ha tale. Are you guys ready? Essentially, I'm an artist. I'm a visual artist. I started Bad Portraits about 10 years ago. I do a lot of paintings. I do a lot of work in virtual reality and augmented reality. I'm a performer. I do illustration and lots of design. And I'm just very, very, very lucky. So what I want to kind of tell you guys about, especially when you're painting and especially while we're going through COVID, which has been just a shocking uh, shift for all of us. Um, and it's amazing that we're all doing this together, but we all are definitely going through our individual journeys and they're so, so different. So I really want this story to kind of hopefully inspire you guys during this really uh, difficult time. So the art of being bad, is actually, in other words, how unexpected circumstances can be embraced and turned into beauty. So essentially, what's bad for your heart is good for your art. So I'm Manny Sobo, a visual artist, a mom, and I make things. Essentially, I'm just really, really lucky. Art is not always about pretty things. I really want you guys to think about this tonight because it's all going to be about trying to find our authentic marks and having fun with what we automatically have which is amazing and not trying to make anything perfect. So art is not always about pretty things. It's, it's about who we are, what happened to us and how our lives are affected. So I'm going to give you a very, very quick overview of my history and then how Bad Portraits started and then we'll get to painting. So here's my family. It's a mom, dad and my sister and everything was really lovely. They're an amazing, amazing family. But as you guys know, and as we've all experienced even before COVID and especially now, life happens. So at the age of three and five, my sister and I, um, you know, had this beautiful life that suddenly was shifted with uh, uh, years of sexual assault. And as a child, that just changes the way your brain develops. So as you can see, here's an example of a normal brain and abused brain. And things are just, you know, they're different. So I really needed to figure out how to, um, you know, face the world in a different way, but in a positive way. So if you allow yourself to use the scariest things about you in a positive and beneficial way in life and work, then yay. Right? Yay. So as years goes on, I went through this and then I developed anorexia at the age of 13. I had lost all my hair. I couldn't walk. I had no muscle mass. I was having organ failure and uh, it was all caused from sexual assault, but I had no idea that. So it was another struggle that I kind of had to face and, and try and find positivity and look at it. Now the abuse sadly in my life, you know, and a lot of ours happened again. And again, and again, as time went on. So I really needed to, instead of looking at it as being, you know, because of who I am, I needed to look at why this is happening and how I can turn this around. So I needed to carpe the shit out of this DM, right? Which I think we're all kind of in that position right now, especially with COVID. So I want you guys to think while we're drawing about this kind of concept. She never looked nice. She looked like art and art wasn't supposed to look nice. It was supposed to make you feel something. So tonight, I really, really want us to try and express some of the emotions that we've been feeling, whether it's, you know, through loss of work or jobs or homeschooling or whatever it is. Let's just get it out and have some fun. So throughout this stuff, I, uh, I developed something called complex PTSD. Now, PTSD is um, a mental illness, but it's also something that I really wanted to turn into a power. So I really wanted to look at it and see, you know, I have this thing, how can I make this positive? And what I decided to do was say no to mediocrity. And just that choice in itself really opened up a lot of, you know, pathways that I don't think I would have had otherwise. And I think as we're all in this position right now, it's a really good thing to start thinking about what things didn't you like in your life before? What things do we want to expand on as we go forward? So as we kind of, you know, take a look at our life in that way, I want us to really celebrate who we are, who we've become, and now what we want to be. Fireworks. Yay. Okay, so now bear with me. You guys can obviously tell I'm an extreme oversharer. So we're going to fast forward a little bit to bad portraits. So bad portraits began because I had this beautiful, beautiful baby at a very young age. What I didn't have was a job or education or a house or anything. So, you know, the world was my oyster. When in reality, 
this was my life. No bees, no honey, no work, no money. So I needed to really look at what I did have. And, and so what I did have was this forced optimism, a bit of safety, and then, you know, nothing else. But I did really have a drive to draw and create things. And then I found something like this. And it said the three laws of art. One, create. The worst it can do is suck. Two, create again. Bad art happens to good artists, which is all of us. And three, just create. Art is cheaper than therapy. So as, I, as we go through this, this is actually a very therapeutic thing. And I am so excited to teach you guys this because it's going to really help as we go on for months in this new situation. So at the same time, I did have some paintings that were kind of selling, but they were really angsty and dark. And I didn't want that to be the thing that drew, drove my art. So this was kind of the base of art before. Art should comfort the disturbed and disturb the comfortable. I really wanted to see how we could highlight humor and you know optimism in artwork. At the same time, this is when Twitter was out. So I, this is me researching Twitter. I was so excited to maybe find a community online and see how I can inject art into that space. And what I realized was everything had profile pictures. It still does. Every social media platform has profile pictures. And I thought, great, there's so many um, pictures that I can steal and start creating from so I can start liking my marks. And so I started stealing profile pictures from anyone I thought was amazing. And I did a really quick contour drawing of them and painted it with watercolor. And that's what uh, started Bad Portraits. And so I, I called it Bad Portraits because obviously if I say it's bad, it like lowers the bar for me and I have less pressure and it also gives less pressure for the subject. I really believe that our authentic lines and all of the things that we think are flaws are actually where our beauty lies. So as this is happening, I decided to, you know, do anything, anybody that I was, that I thought was really funny or cool or anybody that I really thought was doing good work in the world. And one day I did uh, Andy Sandberg from The Lonely Island and I sent him this bad portrait. And I said, hey, Lonely Island, bad portrait time kind of thing. And at the same time, he sent this message to me, which said, cool, but where's Kim? Which is the other member of his band, Lonely Island. And at that moment, I had about 45 minutes of free time. So I sent them a full picture of the full band. And then I sent him one of Kiv and then also 17 others of just Kiv in a row on Twitter. And suddenly he started tweeting about it and, and retweeting about it and started growing this kind of movement um, around the world that really began Bad Portraits growth. And then slowly I started getting orders from celebrities and, and all these incredible people around the world. And shortly after that, McLean's article saw this thing happening and did a big article on it and by that Christmas I had over 3,000 orders and I no longer needed to you know share a can of soup with my little guy so here's a few little wonderful moments of bad portraits there's Tom Cochran I don't know if that's anybody's 80s crush but you know it might be Nenshi might have been I know it was Julie Van Rosendahl's crush um, and there's this guy we don't have to you know respond with how we feel about him but He's got a few of them. And then recently I was able to do uh, Canada's Walk of Fame. This is Will Arnett. He's definitely one of my crushes. Um, and Mark Messier, Alyssa Cara. And now I am very, very lucky in COVID to be highlighting our newest heroes, which are all of the health workers and incredible people on the front lines that are helping us all in COVID. So there's our beautiful, beautiful Dr. Hinshaw. I have, uh, I have some giveaways for you guys after this of that. So that's exciting. But there you get a little bit of a summary of how this all happened. So now, who's ready to make some hot, bad art? Can I get a hoo-ha? Anyone? Oh. Anyone? Hoo-ha. Hoo -ha. All right. So thank you for listening to that. I, uh, I love sharing a bit of my story before we begin. I am so excited to paint with you guys. And so for our first assignment, we are going to be painting a beaver. Do you, so introduce, we can, introduce, hmm? do you want to introduce Stacy real quick and uh, just find out who her crush is? Oh, yes. Let me just, just, <laughs> just one second. I'm getting a voice from the gods, Mother Hoo-ha. Uh, before, before we begin our first exercise, you guys, we need to introduce Stacy, who's the funniest human I know. <laughs> I love her so much. And she's going to outshine me with the artwork today. I know that. So let's all cheer Stacy on. Stacy, can you come on and tell us a bit about your crushes? Well, sure I can. <laughs> Just let me know. 
<laughs> when I'm on camera. <laughs> okay. I think you're, yeah, you're, you're good to go. Okay, I wasn't And, sure. and Stacy, you're looking great. Are you on this side or this side? A wink on both it's sides. Like, I feel so faboosh. It's not even funny. Uh, I, you look amazing. I'm legit wearing my mom's earrings from the 80s. So let me just do what a classic Gail move would be. Would be, let me just. Right, this classic Gail, my mom. You guys all know. Uh, That's what Gail would do. Oh, so good. So when Mel Bolin told me that on May 1st, I'd be joining Mandy Stobo, I was a little bit nervous. Uh, I'm not gonna lie, I'm not very artistic. Um, and so she asked me who my like 80s crush was. And I said, Mel, I was born in 84. So I don't really have like 80s crushes. I have 90s crushes. She's like, well, who's your 90s crush? And I said, obviously it's AJ McLean from the Backstreet Boys. And she was like, oh my God. I was like, let me uh, remind you, or like remind you <laughs> of the fan fiction I wrote as a 14, 15 year old girl. <laughs> this stud, this is stuff in Mahuha. And uh, I legit wrote fan fiction, like, you know, the psychos that are all Twilight fan fiction. Yeah, I fucking wrote fan fiction about AJ McLean. That's how psycho I am. <laughs> But just so you guys can get a real flashback to what I look like about mm, 92. <laughs> Here's me and my sis. And, um, so, I mean, really, as we're here to kind of talk about who our crushes are, obviously it's, it's AJ McLean finger blasting me. Oops, sorry, I wasn't supposed to say that. <laughs> uh, and so anyways, as we started to think about like what kind of, crush I would draw I was like well really my uh early teen years shaped me in such a way because I was a little horn dog from like the get-go that I was fascinated with dicks oh Ross <laughs> getting in there so this is my first time doing a watercolor <laughs> I am pickled pink with how that stink looks <laughs> and then I do it again in uh, black and purple because Oh, shit. Shit. Oh. oh. Anyways. I love it, ladies and gentlemen. Just my favorite thing about the man. And I'm really upset that I was never able to draw the naked man. I can't remember what I was doing, but I was very, very busy. So here I am. <laughs> I believe you were having a baby. Um, but we did save footage for you. Baby. Like, fuck. <laughs> so, yeah. When... Mel said that I needed to come on to, to be Maddie's like, subject. I was like, I am not showing my vagina. Like, I have a line. It's not. And she's like, fuck, Stacey, nobody wants to see your vagina. So, of course. <laughs> but uh, I'm really excited to uh, be your assistant. In fact, I bought a whole bunch of new painting things from Michael's. And I have two different color palettes. One with a, a sheen and one that is just matte. So I'm really, I'm fucking jacked. I've got uh, a bottle of rye that's mostly gone. Oops, yep. <laughs> Let's oh, I love you, Stacey. Here's to Stacey. Feel... Everyone take a drink for Stacey. This is the best. <laughs> but I feel like uh, me in the 80s would be like an absolute waspy woman. It would be like, <laughs> so buttoned up but like really wild in certain certain situations like I feel like <laughs> the hair really helps elongate my face which makes me look thinner so maybe just change it back. <laughs> uh, this is so painting. good <laughs> okay well thank you Stacey you're the greatest assistant ever and I'm so excited for this show to travel across um virtual places around the world with you by my side so thank you <laughs> I love you <laughs> for anyone that wants to see any other um Stacey uh specials just just write a note in the 
uh, in the video right now, and I'm sure she can uh, answer this question later, <laughs> right, Stacey? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so for the first assignment, this is just to get us loose and it's to really find our marks. So the thing we're actually going to do is essentially contour drawing, which is an amazing thing because it makes your eyes move while you look at something and you can't see what your hand is doing. And so what that does is actually changes your pathways in your brain, which is really, really awesome when you're feeling anxiety or any of the stresses we have or locking yourself in the bathroom because your kids won't leave you alone right now and it's a little too much. So this is the thing that I do all the time. You can grab any object around your house when you're feeling a little, little bit stressed out and do this, do this technique and it'll really really help you and calm you down so today for our first assignment we are going to um paint our beaver i mean a beaver so rob i believe is putting up this beaver for you guys and i want you guys to look at this beaver the rules of this are you cannot look at your page you can only look at the beaver and you cannot lift your pen off the page. So as your eyes are moving along the shapes of the beaver, like essentially you're breaking down the shapes of the object. So as your eyes are moving along the shapes of the beaver, your hand moves along with it. And so what, what it does when you don't lift your pen is that it makes like these overlapping lines that are really, really fun and awesome. So I'm just going to switch over to my other camera. If uh, we got the go ahead from Rob that the beaver is up for all of you ladies. All right. What all right. So I, here we go, you guys. What tool do I use first? Because in case you can't tell when it comes to arts and crafts, I'm a big fucking tool. Okay. So right now you guys just need a piece of paper and your Sharpie. So again, the rules are you only look at the beaver, you do not look at your page, and you cannot lift your pen off the page. So it's going to make one long continuous line. So I'll, get, I'll show you guys right now if you guys want to wait, or you can do it with me. So as you can see, I've got, I've got the same beaver right here, right? So as I look at it, I'm going to start at the top of its head, and as my eyes look around the shapes, my hand's going to move on the page, but I'm not going to know what is happening on the page. So here's a big example for you guys. I think we're going to want this in portrait mode because this little beaver is very, um, you know, hungry. <laughs> He's very excited. So I'm going to start on the page. The other thing I want you guys to do is try and use your whole page. We really, you know, a lot of us get really small when we're drawing or creating things not today we're going to use the whole page we're just going to get our shit out on the page and we're going to do it so i'm going to start at the top of like the beaver and as i move around i'm going down to his legs and over into his beautiful little webbed foot with look at his nails those are really nice too and then up i'm gonna go over i see a giant uh oh i fell off the page a giant uh, beaver tail there and then over into his webbed foot. But as you can see, I'm not lifting the pen off at all, and I'm not seeing the page yet. So I'm assuming it's looking like a masterpiece, but I really don't know. So I'm going over into his arm, up into his little sweet little head, and over into his eyes, into his nose, down his little snout and into his cute little mouth and up over to the eye because I know I forgot that. And I think I forgot this side. So I'm going to try and go over there. So there's my masterpiece of a beaver, right? It was really fast. It was really furious. It looks exactly like the photo. Um, and it's pretty awesome and awful. So that's kind of what we are going for with the crushes. This is just to get us loose and excited and see what our mark is. Once we have the crush done after this too, you guys, you're going to see what your lines look like and guaranteed they're different from anyone else. And that beauty is so, so special. So I really encourage you to just love those things and stop trying to make things perfect and really just enjoy who you are. So is everyone, uh, I think we need to look at Stacy's example before we go on to the next step. Um, Stacy, how's your beaver looking? I have to do it twice. <laughs> Sorry, what? It's so bad. <laughs> no, there's no such thing. There's I'm no going to take my virtual background off so you guys can see how I really live, which is in a mess of kids' toys, maybe. <laughs> so this okay, is number show one. Us your beaver. Let's see. Yes. See, it's so good. It's so good. That's exactly what Mark I was like, oh shit, I'm doing it wrong. So then I did it again. That's even better. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay, 
Okay, so you guys, that's exactly what we want. Stacey, you're so talented. I'm so excited. This is amazing. Okay, so if everyone's ready for the next step, this is the next step. We're going to take these overlapping shapes that we made with our overlapping lines. So see how there's like little pockets of shapes here and there. We're going to take those and we're going to fill those in with Sharpie. So you can either fill them in solid, you can add patterns, you can do anything you like. And what this does is it just adds a little more texture and it brings out your drawing a bit. And um, it, it also just like highlights the areas that, you know, have shadows or that you want to highlight. So I usually like to add the little eyeballs to the eye area just to bring them to life because I don't know if you guys are like me and during COVID, but I definitely talk to all of my drawings. Um, and then once they have eyes, it's way, way easier to talk to them. So there, now he's got little cute little eyes. Look at him. He's like squat, squatting. It's so great. Okay. So as you find all those little spots, you're just going to fill those in. You can do polka dots, you can do cross hatches, you can do anything. I'm really excited to see what Stacy's doing. You can do mini schlongs, you can do nips, you can do whatever you like. You know? I am hot. <laughs> Let's see what you're doing, my love. <laughs> I gotta take Michelangelo back. <laughs> oh, I'm so right good. Now. Like, do you see this? <laughs> this is <laughs> terrifying person. no 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 just leave that give that to Corey for father's day he's gonna love it shit that's terrifying <laughs> okay so once you're done doing all those cross hatches of all these little shapes the next step we're gonna do is paint i think we just need one more close-up of stacy's example for for all of us right now Oh, there we go. Okay. <laughs> I can't wait to see. And please, please, please take lots of pictures of this, guys, and send it to Camp Puha. We need to see all the stages, and we need to really post it. Plus, we have a ton of giveaways <laughs> after this <laughs> for you guys with the work that you do. So we're just going to do a few more patterns, and now we're going to paint. So the beautiful thing about painting is colors react to each other just like people do, which is awesome. So what we're going to do for this one is we're going to pick a pair of complementary colors. So complementary colors are essentially the opposite things on the color wheel, like a color up here and a color here. Those are the complementary colors. And what they do is they make the colors explode. They actually bring out the best in each other. So it should be like a marriage, although we're all, you know, seeing new sides of all of our partners right now, but it should be like how a marriage feels. So the complementary colors are these. So they're red and green, blue and orange, and purple and yellow. So I really want you guys to pick one of these pairs and start painting your beaver with those colors. And what you're going to see is just how those colors react to each other. And I really want to do that before we do our crush, just so you can see the engagement in color and what it does. So Sorry, Stace, what, what, oh uh, yeah, you can, for sure, it's red and green. Purple and orange yellow. and blue and purple and yellow. So just pick one of those pairs. Which one are you going to pick, Stacey? I'm doing purple and yellow, but do I start painting because I started? Oh, great. That's perfect. Yeah, so you just start painting. So what you do is you get a lot of water on your brush. You get a ton of paint on there. I'll do the same as Stacey. Or maybe I should do blue and orange because you're doing purple and yellow. So yeah. I'm going to get a ton of blue on there. What I like to do is get a lot of pigment on the edges. And then once the pigment is there, you can add water and kind of wash it in. And what the wash does, it just adds more water to the color. So it kind of blends with different gradients, which, which is a really nice thing to do. So I usually take one color and do the edge on one side, and then, and then I do the other color on the other. But it's totally up to you guys how you guys want to paint because we're all artists and we all are awesome and we all have different styles so we're just going to quickly paint those how's the purple and yellow looking stace Freaking fabulous <laughs> so 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 good i can't wait to see everyone's drawings this is so fun oh man i really really want you guys to be precise with you know your your uh your beaver I, um but with your painting you can be really loose and awesome where do I add my other color? I think I skipped ahead again, but where do I add? Oh, my that's okay. You can just add it anywhere. So some, some people like to add it just on the facial features. Some people just add it on the toes. If you do get bleeding like this or like 
extra water, it's no problem at all to take a paper towel and pat it down. It doesn't really do, like it doesn't really take away from the painting. It just takes away some of the water. Okay. So we're just gonna quickly finish these guys. Mandy, and then we're gonna get to our, pardon? Mandy. Yeah. Uh, camera just see the, I think we want to just kind of slow down a step and they want to kind of see the big beaver photo, maybe big for a second. Sure. Can we do that? Just to let them maybe. Yeah. A second. Yeah. Rob will show it and then I'll just hold this guy up. I don't know if that helps you guys at all. That's so a as you can see, mine's like. Um, okay. Photo realistic. Okay. Yeah, so same. as we slow down, you guys. We're just going to add those textures in with the Sharpie. And then when you are ready, pick that complementary color pair. So the complementary colors are blue and orange, purple and yellow, and red and green. And I just really want you guys to see how the colors engage with, with each other because it's quite, it's quite fun. I get quite excited about this. Um, and I just love to think that we are all painting our beavers right now on this beautiful Friday night. So thank you, Camp Hoo-Ha, for this magical moment. Mine looks Absolutely. On the on the crushes, we'll maybe go through the steps a bit slower just so everybody can uh, keep up. Sure, you bet. Can I use a different color besides just these ones, or? Well, you can. Yeah, you totally can. So the thing about art is there's no rules at all, and really, it's just about you and how you want to create. I love trying to use the compl complementary colors in the first step just so we can see how those colors react to each other. And then you start getting more mindful about how colors, you know, really work together. Just like, you know, all our family units at the moment. Oh, that's a really cute tie connection. I like that. <laughs> Thank you. Stacey, how's, how's your COVID situation going right now? Oh, splendid. I mean, Corey got home from work yesterday, so that was nice. Oh, um, nice. But Walter's now trying this new thing where he likes to attach to me like glue, which okay. um, I'm pretty touched out by the end of the day. And yesterday I was making dinner and Walter came up and he goes, mommy, I love you. And he comes and he sticks his nose right in between my butt cheeks and like went <laughs> And it and like hug on like hung on really really tight and it was really quite uncomfortable because I was like, the fuck away from me. Like, do that to own child because it's like showing you his love. But I was like, get out of my butt. So the fact that I get out of my butt to my son was just like a real treat. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if uh, many of you out there have noticed this with your kids, but definitely our little guy has, you know, he's getting up more in the middle of the night and there's a few other behaviors that have kind of gone, gone backwards just because, you know, things have changed so drastically. And uh, I think that's normal. He hasn't quite got caught between my butt cheeks yet, but. Oh, tomorrow is a new day. <laughs> exactly. I'm ready. <laughs> I'm ready. How's your painting looking, babe? Oh, it's fucking phenomenal. Uh, <laughs> it looks more like a parakeet now. So that's a good thing. That is exciting. That's the other thing. It doesn't have to look like anything. It's really just about oh, us, so you know, perfect. playing. <laughs> <laughs> and and doing it. I love this so much. Mel, we gotta have a virtual art show of all of our beavers. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> I think so. So if you guys are ready and then with the net for the next step, the next step is the most fun and it's really exciting. And for those that are homeschooling with your kids at home, kids like lose their mind over this and it takes quite a long time so if you like if you just need a break and you need to go hide in the garage for a bit just give them some watercolor paints give them some water and teach them how to splatter so splatter is the last step and what you do is you get a lot of water and paint on your brush and then you just kind of you know tap it like you would be tapping um you know like a cigarette or um what, what yeah. yeah. <laughs> what what other things, Stace? Help me out. You can also hold your finger out and like hit it on your finger. That does a lot of things. Or you can like get really yeah. far back, yeah, really fun at it, and get super super angry and let it go. You know. And I think we have a lot of things we want to get out. So that got on my. A wonderful thing to do. 
And the beautiful thing about it is it gets out of anything. It doesn't stay in a thing. So just let yourself go hog wild right now. Uh, I know we've all been carrying a lot of a lot of shit right now. So just let it out. Mandy? So, yes. I think we want to move on to the crushes. And what we might want to do is just uh, split screen the um, the photo and the and your drawing to start. Okay. And then we can keep Stacy mic'd for her color commentary because everybody really wants to see your original and then the painting. Okay. So if everybody has done your beavers right now, I hope you had fun, you know, really caressing those and making them into beautiful pieces of art. Put those aside. This is a great thing to mail to anyone for a gift. So on straight make sure you hold on to these. Yeah, mother-in-laws are a great, great one. Um, it's really endless, the list. Your bosses, anybody really. So just put that aside and you can sign on the bottom. Here's a painting I did of my beaver and then mail it to anybody that you like. Um, so we're gonna put that aside and we're gonna move on to our our crushes. So crushes, like I have a lot of them and um, my biggest crush, which you know, cause I think Mel uh, shared it on Instagram is Burt Reynolds from Three Men and a Baby. So I think I am doing that. I'll, although when my husband is sleeping and the kids are asleep and I don't have any work to do, I do watch uh, I just like search memes and gifts of Ross from friends who is like, he gets me off. So that's exciting. The other crush, obviously a lot of girls have asked for JTT. He is amazing and a wonderful. I got to meet him once while he was filming wild America and he gave me his hat. <laughs> and then it meant so much to me that I gave the hat to my husband on our wedding day. <laughs> it was like my my parting gift to be like, I, I know, uh, I will love you. Uh, I went to um, Shaquille O'Neal. <clears throat> That's a true story. Shaquille, Shaquille O'Neal. Okay. And all I could think about was how big is your dick? That's seriously <laughs> all I could think about. That's well, it's yes. <laughs> we're so fucking big. <laughs> And his feet were so alarming that I was like, how does it fit in? Like, his wife, his wife was like 4'10". She's fucking tiny. And I was like, where? <laughs> That's a nightmare. That is a nightmare. I've been in a situation like that. And you feel it like in your throat. It's terrible. Oh anyway, <laughs> that's too much. Okay, I, happy I Friday. If it's that big, I would look at it and be like, not today. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Ooh, ah. Ooh, ah. Okay, I think we all need a quick drink. Um, so that's the opposite of JTD because he's actually a vegan. And I believe I believe he's not into the female sex, but that might be wrong. But I think he is a little bit shorter than I am. So it would be very manageable, Stacey is all I'm trying to say. Um, so for my crush, I'm going to do Burt Reynolds because, like, he's amazing. But the other crush that I had that I was thinking about, which is terrible – now that I look at him, well, I'm not trying to say anything against him. He's an incredible musician and, and we all love him. But I had like a huge crush on Randy Travis. Did anybody else have that? Yeah. <laughs> Nobody? Randy Travis, he has a big forehead and like he sings beautiful Western music. Country? No? Nobody had that? Okay, well, you guys can send me messages later about, like, everyone who had a crush on Randy Travis, because I know there's a lot of us. Um, and if you don't want to say it now, that's fine. So right now we're going to go into our crush bad portrait. So we're going to use the same rules that we just did with the beaver, except for you can break it down. And so for the ladies that have done this workshop with me, we, we can break it down into sections of the face, just so you know where placement is. But for those sections, you're gonna still do the blind contour so that you get your authentic line. So I will show you guys that right now. I uh, I have a beautiful image of Bert and I'm like you very Tom excited Selleck? for later. Pardon? Hmm? You mean Tom Selleck, don't you? Oh yeah, what was I saying? I was Her saying Bert Reynolds. <laughs> <laughs> what is wrong with me? I'm like staring at him right now, and it is John Selleck. It's my favorite, <laughs> but I also like Burt Reynolds. So there we go. I think I just like the hairy, the super hairy man. Um, okay, so we're gonna take Tom Selleck and we're gonna draw him. If you guys have your own crushes, grab it on your phone. If you print it, on it have it next to you, and we'll just show you guys those steps. Okay, are you guys ready? You ready? I'm who? I'm ready. 
I'm ready. You're ready? Who's your, who do you have, Stace? AJ McLean, motherfucker. Oh, right. Of course you do. <laughs> Are you doing just his face or also his hands? Like, should I do just like, maybe I'll just focus on, on this part. <laughs> oh, beautiful. Okay, perfect. Okay, everyone, get your crushes ready. Get your next piece of paper ready. You can do Burt Reynolds mixed with Tom Selleck. It doesn't matter. Let's just paint our crushes. <laughs> okay, are you ready? <laughs> Here we go. Okay. So as you guys can see, I've got mine next to me. I think you guys will all be the same or in similar positions. I'm going to zoom in a little bit on his face <laughs> so I can really look at those beautiful eyes. Over to the left. Okay. Okay, I'm going to move my pad over here, and then you guys can see him right there. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to start at the top of his hair. And so we're going to do those same rules again, but we're going to break it down into sections. So I'm just going to start with his hair because it's so beautiful. So I'm not looking at the page. I'm just looking at the image. And as I look at the image, my hand moves where my eyes are looking. So as you can see, I'm kind of shaping his head a little bit and going around into this beautiful hairstyle, which I'm very excited about. And I might make my husband grow out over COVID. Okay, so now I'm going to stop. But you see that that was one continuous line. So now I'm going to go into a section into his face. So I'm going to start with those beautiful, thick, hot eyebrows. And I'm just going to... As I go into it, I'm going to go over into his eye. And you can see I'm not lifting my pen or looking at the page. And then I'm going to go down into his nose and up again and over into his bushy, beautiful eyebrow. Can you imagine how hairy this guy is? Like everywhere else? He's so hairy. It's so great. Okay. So as you can see, it's very picture, like it's picture perfect. Um, and it's all continuous lines, right? So now we're going to go into this great thick mustache and we're going to go down into his mouth. So these are the quick and dirty bad portraits. And these are the things that we need right now because this is the one that like takes away anxiety and really just allows your brain to think in a different way in a very fast uh, exercise, which is great. You know, we're all dealing with a lot of things. So as you can see, I'm breaking it into sections, right? Does that make sense, you guys? And I'm not looking at the page. So normally when I do bad portrait orders, I'm looking at the page a little bit more and I'm breaking down the shapes and putting them together. But for this first exercise, we're just gonna do it like this. And, and I love it because it really brings out your authentic self and it brings out, you know, the areas of your crush that you love the most. So, so as we move over, I'm gonna just go over into this section here by his eyes and his nose. And I'm gonna add some shading there and a little bit of face. Like obviously my hair kind of went over too far. So I'm just gonna correct that. The other thing about this is there's no such thing as mistakes, right? It's all just part of your expression and fun. So as you can see, it's looking, you know, exactly like it. I've done like 40,000 of them. So it's, I get that you guys are like, it looks just like the picture. <laughs> and mine doesn't, I'm just kidding. I'm totally kidding. It's awful and that's the beauty of it. Okay, so now we're gonna go over to the other side. I can see that his face over here is a little bit big. So I'm just gonna go down with my lines and watch his beautiful jawline and then into his dimple and up again. Okay, you guys are like looking at it and you're like, whoa, there's a lot of lines and it doesn't make sense. I know, yeah, but, but it will. Real fast. Okay, so, and then you're gonna go over into the hair to fix that and then down there. And then I'm going to do the neck and the shirt. And we have Are lots you? of time, you guys. So we can like keep just doing this continuous line until you guys are ready. So I can tell you, now that I look at it. Sorry, Stace. How do you do the lips? So the lips are just like, so essentially all we're doing is breaking everything down into a simple shape. So like, as you can see with you know, this area on his forehead, there's just like a shape there that makes the line, a shape there that makes the eyelid. 
And so the lips are the same. So it's just a shape. Like it's just like an elongated rectangle that makes that bottom lip. So that's all you're doing. You're not trying to make it look like a face. You're just trying to break down the shapes. Sorry, let's see. Sorry. This is terrifying. <laughs> oh my God, AJ's gonna love this. I can't wait to send it to him. It's so good. It is so, so good. Like his um, look really tricky. Well, if you're not finding success with the lips, all right, you can just make it into a long tongue. Right. <laughs> I hope someone laughed at that joke. Oh I thought it was great. <laughs> okay, so if you're still drawing your crush, then keep on drawing it and really just you know, take time with you and your crush I think, I think and so. really just love this moment. You fix it? Yeah, babe. See, there you go. <laughs> uh, and I think we all need to take a, just a big sip of our beverage for a second. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then when, when you're ready, you do that next step, which is just filling in those shapes. So this one has like so many overlapping shapes, right? So we're just going to go in there and try and... Um, you know, find his beautiful shape so that we can frame him next to our bed, or I mean, on our in our living room, <laughs> and then uh, <laughs> really appreciate our work and also their beauty. So I'm just gonna go in. I like to really make the hair thick. I don't know what it is about his hair. Now that I think of it, like I have a I have an Italian husband. And he doesn't have any hair on his chest or his back. So what does this mean, you guys? Please write in the comments what you think this means. I'm starting to question a lot of things about myself. <laughs> um, I love you guys. I hope that you guys are having fun right now. And Is he I can't wait to see <laughs> your crushes. Sorry, what? Is he having an affair with a waxer? <laughs> <laughs> what? Is he having an affair with a waxer? Sorry, wax? what? <laughs> oh, my God. Well, I guess during COVID, we'll find out. Oh, we know. <laughs> I'm just kidding. But what does that mean? Why am I obsessed with hairy men? It's so hey, great. Do you want to know a story? <laughs> yeah, I do. Is that most of the men that I dated were, like, tall, dark, and handsome, right? Well, handsome, yep. you know, questionable. <laughs> uh, but they were all like above six feet and above dark hair like very like look good in a suit whatever okay and when I met Corey I thought he was like five years younger than me he's five years older than me and <laughs> he just caught me totally by surprise and su like pursued I'm drunk he pursued <laughs> like so good that being a five foot nine blonde guy and <laughs> and like all the men that I dated would be like hairy like full beard chest hair down to their ball fro and like Corey <laughs> is just pretty hairless like it's surprising so <laughs> you know you really have to expand your horizon yeah you're right what's a you're ball really fro? right what's a ball fro <laughs> Well, look. here, I'll give an example. I believe it's like. <laughs> yeah, yeah. About it. Yep. Yeah. All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Can you guys see my Tom Reynolds coming together? Yeah. <laughs> Okay, I want to know who you guys are painting. Mel, can you tell me any of the comments of who's painting who, or do we not know yet? I think they're kind of painting a little bit of uh, everyone. Should we yes. move to the paint spotter for this, and then we'll wrap up? We've got about seven more minutes before we... Uh, okay. Guys, we're starting to lose. Yeah. Our Oops, so. Oh, you bet. All right, so the next step is painting. So I want you guys to paint in any colors. I like to do a darker kind of orange and you kind of paint where the shadows are. So let me show you on a face, your shadows are like under your nose, under your lip, by your nose here and on the edges of your face. So that's what we're gonna do with this color. And we're just gonna go along the edges here and under the chin, kind of anywhere that you 
no, there's, um, there's some shadow on your face. You're gonna do a, just a bit of a darker color. So we'll just do that quickly, right? And then we're gonna take a bit of a lighter color. So I like to take like bright yellow where the light hits you. So the light hits you kind of right on your forehead, right on your cheeks and on your chin and your nose. So we're gonna take a lighter color and put those there. You need a better yellow. I can't wait to see how, Stacy. how's yours looking? So we're just gonna kind of blend those colors and keep the lighter ones where that light hits. And as you can see, as you hit the, the color that's on the edges, it's gonna blend a little bit. And that's what you want, because it's giving a bit of a sculpture to your painting and it really brings out the face. Can you guys see that? I need a white out. No, no, you don't. <laughs> no white out. That's the thing. There's no mistakes. It's just all your lines. And while you guys are, you know, almost completing your painting, I want you to look at your other painting and see what your authentic lines are because you can see your style automatically just by doing these quick exercises. Well, I think I'm showing vast improvement. <laughs> I agree, Stace. I think you are going to be, you know, our next, the next visual artist to watch in 2021. That. <laughs> so I saved the hair for last, obviously, because, um, because there's something wrong with me. No, I'm just kidding. So as you can see, there's some blue bleeding. I'm just going to tap it with the paper towel. And then we're just going to finish this up. And then the last step, obviously, is splatter. So I like to splatter the same color onto the color I was using. So for an example, the hair is blue. I would splatter blue on top of the hair. It just adds another layer of texture and also gives a bunch of energy to your painting. So as you can see, Bert Selleck is looking super fun. I'm gonna hide him in my master bathroom um, for you know, later in Mother's Day. <laughs> uh, this is so fun. Okay, so we're done with this, this quick paint. Now I'm just gonna take the same color and splatter where that color is and then set it aside for it to dry so I can gift it or keep it. <laughs> Uh, I love you guys. This is so fun. I hope you're having the best time at Hoo Ha. Please get your badge. We really uh, had a fun time making the Doogie Hauser badges. They are kind of a kudos and thank you to the incredible health workers out there that are sacrificing so much for all of us. And also, you know, another 80s crush. Um, a, a less hairy one, but one nonetheless. So please grab your badges at the end of this. Uh, also, my muscle shirt that I'm wearing, you guys, is a classic hoo-ha uniform, and I highly suggest you all to get one. Yeah, I um, like the shirt. Mm -hmm. I like can, the we have, can we see Stacy's final? Um, yeah, let's see it. No, don't fucking Okay, so me. there you go. There you go. There's a Tom Selleck which, with Seinfeld and a bit of Ross, and, uh, and that's that's just as easy it is so you're not trying to be precious and that's the whole point of bad portraits is you just really want to have fun express yourself in any way don't worry about the outcome the outcome will always change and surprise you and that's kind of where we are right now so you know i just i just really hope that you had fun and and that you keep painting. It's really, really a great thing for us all. And I really want to see what you guys are making, especially Stacy. Let's see what it is. That's so then I splatter the blue is what you said? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. You can splatter as many colors as you want. Um, and if you're just really having fun splattering, okay. just go nuts it's, with the splatter. Gorgeous. Okay, well, let me, uh, so you guys all remember what my inspiration was because it's magical, right? Oops, yeah. Oh, look at him, and those like circle glasses, oof. Oh! 
Yeah, baby. Yeah. yeah. Wrap that up and put it in your basket for Mother's Day. And that's why he finger blasted me in my dreams. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's oh. See, like, do you, do you see the transition from terrifying beaver? Yeah. <laughs> terrifying boy so band. good but look at them like your lines are consistent and that's what i love is we're all born with our own lines so let's just like embrace them and get them out there it's the best so there we go Hoo-ha! i hope you guys had fun i want to see all your paintings i want you to keep painting send them my way send them to camp mm-hmm. Hoo-ha. um and thank you so much for spending time with me i'm gonna oh like i'm gonna come back and uh do a quick uh yeah, up. here comes here comes the mother hoo ha. I love you awesome. now. Thanks for having me. Awesome. <laughs> I mean, when I'm ready. <laughs> hey, Mandy, how do you recommend? Lot lighted. Hi, everybody. Thank you guys for sticking with us. I am like I'm having fun. I'm able to enjoy this. Um, this has been amazing having Mandy, having Stacy, having Carla, having J9, having this whole crew, um, and having this be our first seamless event has been just, uh, super great. So thank you guys for sticking with us through some rough weeks and thank you, Rob. Like I said, we're going to, we're going to have you on lockdown and (laughs) in our (laughs) until further notice. So I'm, (laughs) Um, we're going to have Mandy for more events in person, hopefully in the fall, online for some events. What she does is so inspiring. And she, like I said, she's just a camp treasure. We're so happy to have her and she'll be back for more stuff for sure. Um, a couple of last minute things before we say goodbye. I want to, again, say thank you to my team, Carla, J9, Mandy, uh, Stacy, Rob, Diana, who's helping behind the scenes, and Amber LaChamber, who set up the partnership with... Um, Kensington Art Supply to get you guys a bunch of your art supplies. Thank you, Amber, for teeing that up. Um, in terms of the contest, I've got some Prince of Mandy's. We've got a Dr. Henshaw, a Joe Exotic, a Carolyn, Carol Blaskin. Um, I've got yeah. two prints that I'm going to give away. So if you guys want to tag me on any social media with your artwork or just a selfie of yourself, whatever, um, tag myself and Mandy or Bad Portraits if you can. And we'll do a giveaway for some Mandy goodies. Um, Also, Rob's going to pull up some images. Um, We're going to be releasing some special edition t-shirts that are going to have a charitable donation, which I'll announce next week. Rob, do you want to pull up the t-shirt? Yeah, let's pull up that one first. We've got our first shirt, which is the beaver one. You don't see them yet. Oh, hang on a second. You guys can see the distance makes the hoo-ha grow fuller one. And then the second one is the tent, the full bush tent that says uh, under quarantine. On Facebook on my so phone. We'll be sharing information about those t-shirts in the next week. So some of the proceeds from those t-shirt sales are going to go to charity. And then also I want to do a quick uh, shout out for our next event, which I'll be announcing um, who our camp counselor is in the next week. We're gonna change things up a bit. We've been doing some things that are super fun and lighthearted. Um, we're actually gonna do something that I'm calling Camper Care. Um, and if Rob wants to pull up the, the artwork for that one, um, it's just going to be a badge that looks like the first aid symbol, but it's actually two, po- two bottles of red wine <laughs> crisscross. Uh, so I feel like a lot of us kind of could use some help in the, in the sort of mental health arena right now I think we are all so busy trying to make sure everybody else isn't going to be broken after this our kids our parents our spouses and our kids are going to need a lot of dental work (laughs) (laughs) our husbands are going to need a haircut (laughs) but really it's, it's you guys that I'm worried about at the end of the day so I'm lining up some camp counselors that are gonna give us some camp really camp uh themed um content around just how to manage our own mental health um and help make sure we're not broken in two weeks in a month in six months so 
it's a bit of a Mother's Day thing. I know not everybody that comes to these events or attends these is a mom. So it's just going to be a super feel good, build us up. But there's still going to be F-bombs. It's going to be in the same camp style. So Camper Care is up next. So Special Edition Tees, that's our next event. Thank you, team. Um, and like I said, this is a, a place to escape for an hour, two hours. Um, when you can't handle being here, if you can't handle being now. Camp will take you away. We're here for you guys. I told everybody I wasn't going to cry tonight. I'm not going to cry because it's been a great event. So um, we're here for you guys in any way possible. And if you had fun tonight, please pick up your badge on the website. It's our only way of uh, supporting ourselves right now to pay all the amazing people I've got helping me. So purchase your badge. Uh, T-shirts are on sale right now. And I will um, share information about our special edition T-shirts in the next week or so. Love you guys. Thank you. Thank you, Rob. Thank you, team. Have a great night, guys. And we'll uh, we'll talk soon. Bye. 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 Good night. Good night. Love you. Love you. Oh, Melly. Are we done? We are. Every camp has a theme song. That requires you sing along. The more we keep on drinking, the better we'll start singing. If you like to drink, want to learn to fix your sink, seems like a functional thing. <laughs> want to earn some badges. <laughs> And unite with other badges. <laughs> Let's make a place that we belong. Let's sing the Camp Haruha song. We're going to Camp Haruha. But you really fucking hate camping. I do. <laughs> can make a craft or have a beer. Craft beer? You'll learn some useful shit here. <laughs> That's what I hear anyway. <laughs> Let's make a place that we belong.